So Savitri was addressed as the traveler in the chariot of the sun. Surya Ratha, chariot of the sun, Surya Ratha. And she is riding the golden chariot. That is how she found Satyavan in the Shalva forest. She was driving her own chariot, the chariot of the sun, and she found Satyavan. Of course, at that time, she did not know that there is a doom waiting for him. One year after they are yawning together, she was moving in the ninth cloud or whatever cloud you want to say, <laughs> and she was extremely happy. Now it is the same lady who is chasing death in the darkness of the night. Now this chariot of the sun cannot move in the darkness of the night without making it bright. It has to bring light also to the darkness. So while she was chasing Satyavan in the chariot of the sun to find, while moving to find Satyavan in the chariot of the sun, she has to also find Satyavan now again in the depths of darkness. And that is why she is driving her chariot, chariot of the sun, Surya Ratha. The golden light, the supramental light, has to also enter into the depths of darkness. It is necessary if the true supramental union between Satyavan and Savitri is to be present in the mortal world also on earth, Mrityu Loka. Therefore, she is the worshipper of that love riding the chariot of the sun even in the darkness. Therefore, she is a high priestess. The worshipper or the god of love, even in the depths of darkness. In the holy fancy is a shrine, but this gentleman thinks that she is moving in her fancy, holy, sacred fancy. In the holy fancy shrine, who is a magic ritual in earth's house, worshipest ideal and eternal love. What is she doing here? According to him, she is simply worshipping ideal and eternal love with the routine rituals where in the earth's house. In the earth's house it cannot be, but that is what she is doing. Therefore, it is a fancy shrine. It cannot be. Therefore, it is, it is her fancy which is making her do all that, you see. High priestess in the holy fancy shrine, who with a magic ritual in earth's house, worships ideal and eternal love. What is this love that thought has deified? It is your thought, your imagination, your mental formation, which has given rise to this love. What is this love after all? You have made a god of this love, made an idol, murti of this love, this sacred vision and immortal 
meet you have made it a legend you have made it a myth because of your thought because of your mind because of your brain there is nothing like really love according to him see i precise see this is a very peculiar construction first he is telling the poet is telling us she is a traveler and from the image of a traveler he is shifting immediately that she is a priestess shifting immediately from the traveler she is a traveler going but then how suddenly she becomes a priestess you see so that seems to be a bit of incongruent description a traveler becoming a priestess immediately but if you see the traveler in the long run as i said just now that she is the one who is carrying moving in all the past of the world to worship love whether it is in the mortal world whether it is on earth whether it is in the darkness of the night whether following the path of yama she is a traveler always looking for that god of love and therefore she is a priestess so it is a bit of a long drawn connection between traveler and priestess you have any other explanation <laughs> can you repeat one fancy high priestess in the holy fancy shrine one fancy fancy imagination you are ideal you is kind of an illusion fancy you are talking i i heard she oh, her imagination yeah Uh, yeah okay. it is your mental Same formation mind. yeah basically yeah. Yeah. so you all that you are thinking yeah. is only your imagination is yeah. fancies who therefore she is doing magic ritual so he is uh, very yeah. sarcastic very sarcastic also yeah. in making that kind of yeah. statement yeah i see what is this love yeah. that you have made a god of him Yeah. yeah prema murti <laughs> made an image murti image idol deified is love this sacred legend and dev and you are calling it sacred holy very piously pure in that yeah. in other words he is taking here in his whole uh, passage the image of a worshiper in a temple the rituals which are done the puja which are done the way in which you wave the light and do this and do that offer flowers offer food all that kind of thing that has become a legend therefore it is sacred for you holy sacred and immortal myth but according to him it is a myth he does not recognize that it is also a symbol it is a legend and a symbol you see it is a legend and a symbol you see it is a conscious learning of thy flesh yeah it is your nerves your glands which are crying for relationship you see, you see it is a conscious yearning of thy flesh it is a glorious burning of the nerves a rose of dream splendor petaling the mind so it is mind which has put this rose flower on the tree of love <laughs> a great red rapture and torture of thy heart red rapture red rose of love and torture of the heart obviously that love itself becomes a torture 
because the rose has thorns <laughs> and therefore it becomes a torture. A rose of dream splendor, fiddling the mind, a great red rapture and torture of the heart. A sudden transfiguration of thy days, it passes and the world is as before. You think that you are loving somebody, but the moment he is absent, you will weep, cry, shout, go into tantrums for a few days and get quieted down and the routine starts. <laughs> Where is love? The routine starts. All the tantrums are over and you fall into the routine, you see. And world is as before, you see. A ravishing edge of sweetness and of pain. Ravishing, extremely beautiful, extremely attractive, edge of sweetness, that is love. And at the same time, pain associated with that. Sweetness and pain, they go, they go together. Together with rapture and torture. A thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine. When you are in the company of your lover, the beloved in the company of her lover, then everything makes seem divine. <laughs> yeah. A golden bridge across the roar of the ears, roar of the ears. A golden bridge across the roar of the ears. You can see the sound of the waves coming here. And the sound is becoming more distinct with the alliteration of R. Bridge across roar ears. <laughs> the alliteration of R makes the sound really distinct, very really powerful. A golden bridge across the road of the years. We can scan this line, a gold and bridge, second foot, AM, AM, across third AM, the road, fourth AM, of the ears, and a pist. These are the five feet, four AMs and an epistasy. A golden bridge across the road of the years. So you can see the rushing of the waves forward moving, you see. The roar is loud noise, suppose. So the waves are coming and dashing against something, against the shore, for instance. You hear the loud noise. So this roar stands for the noise of the waves we are actually, the flood, the river, and therefore the bridge. As if the bridge is there, the river is flowing under the bridge, and the rushing of the sound is heard. That itself becomes a golden bridge, a cord tying thee to eternity. So that bridge becomes a cord that you are linked up with eternity. A thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine. A golden bridge across the road. I don't know how this fellow knows all this. <laughs> you see, he never came to earth, never enjoyed the company of a woman, and still he's <laughs> talking about all these things, you see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A thrill in this yearning which is seem divine, a golden bridge across the road of the year, a cord tying thee to eternity. 